Hi there. Welcome to this tutorial on arithmetic progressions, or as some people call it, arithmetic sequences. Now I've got two sequences here, and you'll notice that I've given you the first four terms in the, each of the sequences. So see if you can figure out what the fifth term would be in each of these sequences. Just give you a moment then to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So in this first sequence here, did you notice that each of the terms go up in steps of two? Let's just put that in here. We're adding two to the first term to get the second term, eight. Third term we add two to get 10, and the fourth term add two to get 12. So the fifth term must be 12 add two, 14. And for this second sequence, with this one, what was happening was that we were going down in steps of three. Each term we took off three to get the next term in the sequence. So this term here would be two take away three, which would be minus one. Now when we get sequences like this, or this one here, where we're going up in equal steps, or going down in equal steps, then these types of sequences are called arithmetic progressions, or APs for short, or you could call them an arithmetic sequence. Now what I want to do is show you how we can work with arithmetic progressions, but we need to learn a bit of terminology first of all. What I've done here is this first term here in each sequence you'll see I've done in blue, okay? And what we have is that the first term is called A. And so for this particular one, the first term would be six, A would be six, and in the second sequence the first term here would be 11. And you'll also notice that up here I've got what's called the common difference, and the standard letter we use for that is D. And in the first sequence that common difference is 2, and in the second sequence it is minus 3. So it doesn't have to be always a positive number, it can be a negative number. A common difference then, if you were to do one term take away its previous term, you would get that common difference. 8 take away 6 is 2. 10 take away 8 is 2. Down here, 8 take away 11 is minus 3. 5 take away 8 is minus 3. So you're getting that common difference. So what I want to do now is just give you some formulas that we develop for working with arithmetic progressions. And to do that, what we're going to do is just look in general at what the terms would be in an arithmetic sequence, okay? So in general, the terms, all right, what are they going to be? Well, we've said already the first term is always called A. Now, to get the second term, what I'm doing is I'm adding on the common difference. So if I had 6 to get the next term, I'm adding on 2, that common difference. And here, if I've got 11 as my first term, I'm adding on minus 3. So the second term will always be a plus that common difference. So that's the second term. The third term, I've got to add the common difference again to this term. So it'd be a plus d plus another d. In other words, a plus 2d. The third term is a plus 2d. So what would the fourth term be? Will it be this term plus another d, a plus 3d for the fourth term? And can you see that for any term, I'm just taking one more away from that term and multiplying it with d. So if I was looking at the seventh term, it would be a plus 6d. Tenth term, a plus 9d. And what about the nth term? The nth term 
would be a plus n minus 1 times d. And so we have another notation that we use here. For the first term, you'll see some people call it u1. Second term is called u2, and so on. Third term, u3, fourth term, u4, and the nth term would be un. Okay? So, one of the formulas that we can use when we want to find out what a particular term is in an arithmetic progression, like for instance, suppose I wanted the hundredth term in this particular sequence here. I don't want to have to write them all down. I want to be able to go to the hundredth term. Well, we've seen here that the nth term, or you could say it's un, okay, is equal to the first term, a, plus n minus 1, times the common difference. Now, I know un might appear to be this last term here but it could be any term in that sequence. So if I wanted the fifth term, it would be the first term plus 4. Okay, n being 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 times d. So that's the formula then for the nth term. And uh, we'll just highlight that there. And you often see this formula in formula books. Okay, so uh, if you forget it, do check that out, but I would certainly encourage you to learn it. Now another thing you're going to be doing when you're working with arithmetic progressions is that we'll be often asked to work out what the total of our terms are going to be. So if I wanted to obviously know what the sum of the first two terms in this sequence were, it would just be 6 plus 8, clearly 14. But suppose I wanted to know what the sum of the first, say, 100 terms were. I don't want to have to do that on a calculator just by doing 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 14 and so on. I want a quick formula that can do it. Well, there is a formula. I'm not going to prove it to you here, but uh, just give this formula to you and you've got to be able to use it, okay? We call it Sn, okay? This is the sum of the first n terms in an arithmetic progression. It's equal to the number of terms, n, that you're summing, divided by 2, and it's all multiplied by twice the first term, so that's going to be 2a, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Okay, So that's that particular formula. And there is another one that we can also use. I'll put here or. Another one is n, or we'll just put Sn, equals the number of terms, again, over 2, multiplied by the first term plus the last term, L. So I'll show you how these work in a moment, okay? But again, this is a formula, or two sets of formula, that you need to be familiar with. And it could be that your formula book might well give these. So let's just do an example. Let's take uh, a sequence. We'll just put here for the sequence of terms. I could have called it a progression, an arithmetic progression, but we'll just use the word sequence, okay, here. So we're going to look at the sequence. Let's say we have 5, 9, 13, and 17, and so on, okay? So suppose we're going to want to find the 21st term. Okay, the 21st term. This would be called, say, U21. It's up to you whether you write the 21st term or, say, U21. Now what it's going to be is going to be this formula here. But we need to know what A, the first term, is and what the common difference D is. Well, we can see that the first term here is 5. So let's just put here a equals 5. And the common difference, well, this is going up in steps of 4. So d would be equal to 4. So using the formula here for the 21st term, 
n would be 21, so you're going to get a, which is 5, plus n minus 1, so 21 minus 1 is 20, and that's multiplied with the common difference of 4. Now if you total this up, you've got 5 plus 80, which then is 85. Now the other thing that I want to show you is how we can use these formulas here. The sum of the first n terms. So suppose we wanted to find out then the sum of the first 21 terms, s21. In other words, 5 plus 9 plus 13 plus 17 plus and so on. All 21 terms. Well then, using this particular formula, we've got n which would be 21. We divide that by 2 and we multiply this with twice the first term, so that would be 2 times 5, plus n minus 1 then times the common difference. n is 21, so if we take 1 away from that we've got 20, multiply it by the common difference of 4, and that will be our total of the first 21 terms. Work that out and you end up with a total of 945. Or you've got the alternative formula here, the sum of the first 21 terms. Here it would be 21 divided by 2. And then it's the first term, which we've seen is 5, plus the last term. The last term will be the nth term, when n is 21. And when n is 21, we've already seen that the 21st term is 85. So if I put 85 in there, work this one out, and you get, of course, the same total, 945. So hopefully that's given you an idea then how we can go about using these particular formulas. And that should be sufficient for you to be able to tackle the questions. But in later videos, I will give examples of different methods, different types of questions you can get where we have to use these particular formulae.